we're going to go first to California and we'll hear from David Kililea uh, from the Office of Research, University of Cal uh, California in San Francisco. And he will speak on whole grain nutrition and what is and what is not in your whole grain product. So David, take it away. Thanks for the invitation to speak at Grain School. This is my first time joining and uh, good morning from sunny California. Uh, I'm a biochemist with long-standing interest in nutrition and the health benefits of whole grain, uh, particularly wheat. So I'm gonna share a little bit of that with you this morning. Um, wheat has an incredible um, association with health benefits. The epidemiology on this is just really quite strong. Uh, many, many studies of people who are eating more whole grains uh, show reduced risk of diabetes, heart disease, stroke. It's really a who's who of the age-related diseases. And the correlate of this is that um, uh, there are uh, improvements in a number of different uh, of our metabolic processes, blood pressure, weight maintenance, gut health. You'll hear more about this uh, through some of the speakers today. And um, it's it just the, the strength of the evidence is really incredible. So in these, we even have large cohort studies where we've looked at uh, people who are taking in higher levels of whole grains. And there's just a very good association with reductions in many specific disease morbidities and even all cause mortality. And when you do the same experiments with, uh, without whole grains, with using instead refined flour-based products or white flour, you don't see these same benefits. And in fact, in some cases, you actually see negative health benefits. So um, you would think we would be all fairly motivated then with this kind of uh, strength of research, strength of literature to be taking in as much whole grains as we can. Um, the USDA and the, in the United States recommends six servings total of grain and making at least three of your servings whole. So they have a little motto of make your hat, make your, make your whole, half your whole grains. I, now I've messed up the motto, but I think you know what I mean. Uh, make half your grains whole. And this is, um, this is a, 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 has been in the, our dietary guidelines for 15 years and um, very little movement, I would have to say, in our population. So in the U.S., the wheat consumed is still mostly refined. Uh, only 8% of adults and 3% of kids get to that three, uh, three grit servings per six servings threshold. And 40% of the U.S. get little to no whole wheat at all. This is a big deal because grains make up a large portion of the diets around the world. And the U.S. is no exception. Um, 20 to 40% of the diet is grain and uh, it's mostly wheat and varies between different cultures, but certainly wheat is uh, the star. And the average uh, American citizen eats about 60 kilos of uh, wheat a year. So the reason why we're excited about wheat and has all those associated health benefits is because of the nutrients that are inside the wheat. So you can divide those wheat nutrients up in terms of um, uh, macronutrients. These are ones we need in, in abundance like carbohydrates and proteins. The micronutrients are the more classic recognized um, small nutrient content like vitamins and minerals. And then we have the other category. Most people recognize the fiber out of that, but there are a number of other chemicals that are really useful and we'll talk about them in a moment. First, a little bit of nutrition 101, uh, just to understand the difference between macro and micro. Um, I like to think of nutrients as like an artist's palette and you make a complete picture or a complete meal by taking from each part of the palette. Uh, this is a little schematic on the amount of uh, a, a sort of a visualization on the amount of these nutrients that we need to take in um, a day to be healthy. So if you're on the 10 grams or higher side, we tend to call this macronutrients. And if you're on the little under the 10, uh, one gram or lower, uh, we tend to call those micronutrients. That's sort of an arbitrary cutoff. It just makes it easier for us to group the, the nutrients together and talk about them. The macronutrients are familiar, uh, carbohydrates, protein, fat, all sort of clustered around the 100 grams, 50 to 100 grams a day to be healthy. But the one macronutrient that gets forgotten about a lot is fiber. And you'll hear more about fiber uh, from Dr. Ross's talk, but it's, um, it, it is expected that a, or recommended that a U.S. citizen gets around 25 to 40 grams per day of fiber, and most Americans struggle to even get 15. So it's a pretty serious macronutrient deficiency in our country. Uh, micronutrients, there's also plenty of deficiencies. There's also a really wide distribution of these micronutrients. So in green are the vitamins that we need, vitamin A, the B complex, C, D, and E, and K. Um, and there's a huge range of what we need. If 
Um, those of you who are more math oriented, that's about six orders of magnitude there uh, from vitamin A all the way down to vitamin B12, of which you need only about a millionth of a gram to be healthy. And in blue now are the minerals. So uh, you need lots of potassium and calcium around a one to four grams. And then that sort of drops all the way down the scale. Uh, this, the amount that you need though, is not, a, not intended to imply importance. All of these are important. All of these are essential minerals. You just need them at uh, different levels to be healthy. Okay. So what now, how does whole wheat contribute to the nutrient density? Uh, do we, is it just a couple of nutrients? Is it the ones that are more abundant, the ones that are less? And the answer uh, is um, uh, impressive. So all of the nutrients that are significantly contributed from whole grain are shown in the orange here. So that of course is carb, fiber, uh, fats, a lot of the minerals and a lot of the vitamins. Uh, vitamin A, vitamin E are particularly deficient in our, in our uh, diets and whole grains are a good source. Now, I could talk about any of these. I thought I'd give you one example. Um, I didn't choose the one that was most deficient. Uh, I chose zinc. Uh, zinc in the US is only around 10 to 20% deficiency, um, but zinc is really critical. There's something that people know about zinc. It's the association with the immune system. Since we're inundated with information about coronavirus and pandemic, I thought this was a great one to talk about because um, you need eight milligrams if you're a woman, uh, non-pregnant, you need 11 milligrams if you're a man or a pregnant woman to be healthy through the day. So how does, how would uh, whole grains contribute to that? So imagine a, a meal uh, through the day, three meals through the day, cereal, bread, sandwich, and uh, some pasta. And that's about two servings each of whole grains, uh, of grains in general. So there's your total six uh, servings of grains a day. And if each of these wheat-based choices were whole wheat, you'd get around 0.8 milligrams uh, per meal for a total of around 2.4 milligrams of zinc. So then if you add that up with the milk and the, uh, and the cereal and the ham and cheese and the sandwich and the veggies, uh, you, get around, you get about eight milligrams at the end of the day. So that's the RDA for women and just under the RDA for men. So that's a major contributor to the zinc content, um, the, the uh, zinc needs for the day if you were using whole grains. And this is the same, you can do the same analysis with vitamin E or selenium, um, other nutrients that are essential and are running a little bit low in our diets and also connected to immunity. So if, um, if vitamins and minerals are like a palate, uh, what about these phytochemicals, this other category? And um, I, the palate uh, analogy fades, and really what you're talking about is a huge spectrum of uh, compounds. Uh, many of these we understand, but many of them we don't. There are thousands and thousands of phytochemicals. Many of them are phytonutrients. And uh, there have been several studies. This is a study from a group in uh, North Carolina um, looking at just all the chemicals that they could isolate out of whole grain wheat. And it's just a stunning amount of chemicals. Many of these have health benefits. Um, that, and, and many of them also work together. There's a synergy to these compounds so that you get more benefit than just individual compounds alone. Um, so let me give you three examples. Uh, ferulic acid is a com very common chemical in um, abundant chemical in wheat and other grains as well. Uh, it's a phenolic compound. Uh, it's a fairly strong uh, antioxidant. It's probably the most important antioxidant in beer, keeping um, beer stable and longer shelf life, which is important to many of us who enjoy it. Um, it stimulates metabolism in our bodies. It stimulates detox pathways. And in some studies, it actually has anti-aging effects, um, uh, probably through its antioxidant stimulatory mechanisms. So another compound of interest is a, uh, from a class called lignans. And this particular lignin is common in wheat and you can find it, in, but in other grains too. Um, also in itself, it's a strong antioxidant. But what's fascinating about lignans is many of them can be metabolized by our gut bacteria into secondary compounds that tend to be very beneficial. And this particular one gets um, converted into a compound that's mildly estrogenic. And so that sort of has a moderating tone on our horm hormonal fluxes, uh, which is beneficial to our body. It's very, it tends to uh, associate with lower blood, 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 lower blood pressure and cardiovascular health. And in some studies, it seems to have an anti-cancer effect. So certain kinds of cancers can't grow very well in the presence of this particular compound. The last one I'll tell you about is from the fiber category. So this chain, you know, this particular xylem could be a short chain like this, or it could continue on for a while to be long chain or, or, uh, or and branched. 
Um, and I think most people think about fiber, they think about stu stool motility. So that's clearly a relevant um, uh, role, but it also has a role in maintaining um, and lowering cholesterol uh, levels in our body and helping insulin function better. And uh, it serves as food for the bacteria in our guts and it tends to uh, encourage the healthier uh, bugs that we want to be our um, tenants uh, in our lower GI, uh, it tends to stimulate their uh, growth and establish their, cult their uh, culture better. What's often misunderstood about these kinds of chemicals is the thought that they're just, you know, part per trillion and hardly relevant. And I just thought this was really worth looking at. The, the ferulic acid, you can get enough ferulic acid, you can get about to one gram a day if you eat a lot of uh, whole wheat um, uh, products, whole wheat foods. And that one gram a day, that's the level that we get in terms of calcium in our body. Lignans um, come in at about the level that we absorb zinc and fibers, is, uh, are, this particular fiber uh, comes in at the level of around the B vitamins. So these are abundant compounds, uh, many of which we have some understanding of, but not a, a large understanding of what they do. And usually it's very isolated. We don't know a lot about how they work together. And that's we're sure that that's very important. So if you, are not eating whole grains, you're eating mostly refined, you're losing out on a lot of these benefits that we just discussed. So I think most people know that a whole grain would have this oversimplified three compartment model of bran, endosperm, and germ. And when you refine the grain, you're taking away the bran and the germ, leaving just the endosperm. And so what does that do to the nutrient content of the food? you lose a lot of the good stuff. So carbohydrates are still there and some of the proteins are still there, mostly the glutens, but you're losing the oils, the essential oils, the fat and the minerals that are mostly associated with the germ and the bran and a lot of the other good um, phytochemicals as well. So let's see what happens when we do that same zinc analysis, um, this time with uh, refined cereal, uh, refined wheat, and um, the, the act of refining wheat removes zinc at about 75%. So now you're only getting around 0.2 milligrams of zinc uh, for each meal, and it ends up being around 0.6 for the day. So if nothing else changes, you're only ending up with about six, a little under six milligrams, which is well under the RDA for both men and women. And I make this point because zinc is so important for uh, the strength of our immune system. We've seen studies in which patients who were recovering from COVID the patients who recovered faster and more robustly had higher circulating zinc levels um, compared to those that did not uh, uh, recover quickly and they tended to have lower zinc levels. So this is you know, in our, our health and, and we think about right now our immune system functioning as one of the top issues of the day are based on getting good nutrients and whole grains can be a big part of that story. So everything I've told you so far is very mainstream, I think would be widely accepted. Uh, among nutritionists. Now I'm going to move into a little bit of sort of a controversial area that I've been involved in uh, recently in, in trying to understand what really are whole grain products that we see at a commercial level. And the problem is, is that while there is, a, is an accepted definition in the nutrition community and cereal chemists uh, are, are particular pointing out that it's fine if the whole grain is, is crushed or flaked, but the real key is that those three compartments, the brand, the endosperm, and the germ, are retained in the same relative proportion as they would be in the intact grain. And the problem with that definition is it's not regulated, at least in the United States, it's not regulated by the USDA or FDA. Um, it's provided as a guidance to the industry on what to call whole wheat, but um, uh, there's really, there's, there's no like enforcement of that, just if you want to say it that way. So the only real enforcement, the only real um, legislation is, is related to the use of a health claim in the United States. The health claim on wheat um, can be applied to a product. If that wheat flour, if it's a flour product, if the flour is 51% or more whole grain, and then likewise, if for a wheat-based food, of the grain components, 51% uh, need to be whole grain uh, with a minimum amount uh, uh, per ounce. And I don't, for me, this was a very startling um, discovery because I assumed when I go to the grocery store and I pulled a, a, a bag of wheat of bread off the shelf and it says whole grain, that I'm mostly getting whole grain because I'm trying to get, reap the health benefits that are associated. And um, savvy consumers will start to look at the color of the bread or the ingredient order or fiber. The problem is that these are not robust indicators. 
The stamping program that we have in the United States for whole grains is very helpful, but it is based on manufacturer supplied data. There's no uh, aftermarket testing uh, available. No independent marker exists. There are no wheat police. And so um, this is something that I was interested in and uh, started digging around this long story that would take way too long to go into. But um, what we found was that uh, there is a protein in specifically in the germ component of the wheat. And we think that's the best uh, compartment to track when you're trying to correlate with whole, whole grain wheat. Um, this particular protein was called wheat germ agglutinin, it's WGA, it's part of the immune system of the actual wheat, um, the baby wheat uh, embryo. And it is uh, very specific to that fraction. Uh, this was great work from the National, uh, National Institute of Agricultural Research in France, very famous for research on uh, on grains, and they had shown that this was a very stable and detectable marker. And so we just sort of did this simple experiment by taking refined flour and um, taking the uh, whole grain flour from a, a company named called Community Grains in Oakland that I've been working with, and they provided a little bit of seed money for this testing. Um, we know this is identity preserved uh, wheat, and so we track it from uh, field to bag, know that it's 100%. And when we, I did a mixture of the whole grain with the refined flour with increasing amounts of whole grain content, we saw a very proportional increase in the WGA marker. It was very easy to, to track. Um, and thanks to the Bread Lab and Steve Jones's group, uh, we had isolated fractions and we could show that the marker was hardly detectable in the endosperm, but fully detectable in the germ. So we did this very simple experiment of going to the grocery store. It was a very convenient sampling of a number of different brands that brand flowers that brand themselves as whole wheat. And we just looked at the marker. So if you set the whole grain standard at 100% and simply ask, how do these other wheats uh, fare in terms of the marker of the germ, that WGA, and we expect that the refined flour would be hardly detectable because there's no germ there. And what was surprising to us is that there were some um, brands that performed quite well and seemed to have most of the germ intact whereas other brands were more like 50, 60%, which, you know, if they have the health statement, that's all they need because that's all the FDA requires. So there's no real transparency in that sense of like what amount of whole grains are in these things. Um, we did the same thing with pasta. This is all wheat pasta, again, setting a whole grain standard at 100%. These were even more surprising. Um, even though these were branded as whole wheat, uh, many of these products had very, very little detectable uh, marker that associates with germ. So suggesting that there's very little germ left in, in the product. Um, so that's a, a, a very quick uh, sampling of some of the things that I'm interested in in terms of nutrients and then tracking the nutrients into the product. Um, the takeaway would be that we know that there is a uh, that consumption of whole wheat associates very strongly with protection from many specific diseases and associates with increased longevity. Uh, the consumption of refined wheat products, which is what most of the United States is doing, does not carry the same health benefits. Um, there is a large palette of vitamins and minerals pr provided by the consumption of whole grain, including many that are uh, deficient in the typical American diet, like vitamin E and magnesium and selenium, uh, provides fiber, which is critically low in the American diet. And all of these uh, nutrients uh, work together to create uh, health, to support our immune system and other parts of our, uh, other than our metabolism. Um, but beyond the, the traditional nutrients, there's this huge spectrum of phytochemicals that are unique and each grain has their own set. Uh, many of these chemicals, there are thousands of them, many of these chemicals uh, work together and wheat has its own unique pattern. Rye and barley have their own unique patterns. So you get health benefits from eating all these different grains because you get a different assortment of phytonutrients along with it. And then finally, if you're motivated to eat more grains, you are gonna run into this problem of there's no sort of independent testing approach, at least in the United States, for identifying what is a whole grain. So uh, that's something we're working on and other people are working on too. Um, and you can learn more about that uh, uh, through uh, some of these links here that I'm providing. You can, do a quick snapshot of your phone if you're interested on these QR codes. Uh, so you can look at the dietary guidelines um, that are uh, available that talk about whole wheat in depth. It's a fantastic site at the Linus Pauling Institute in Oregon um, uh, on whole wheat, and it really goes through all the nutrients. So if there's if you're interested in some of that discussion or you're trying to teach your own class on whole wheat nutrition, this is a good place to go. 
um, to look at more about the definitions or regulations of whole wheat. The Whole Grain Council has a great site on this. And then if you're interested in that little last study that we were doing on biomarkers, there was a nice Civil Eats article that gives some context on it and links to the individual paper. So I will stop there.